Hey friends, this is Jim here at Science Talk. And I want to discuss with you something that appeared on the online publication EOS, which is associated with the uh, AGU. And it's what we see here. More frequent El Nino events predicted by 2040. That's 17 to 18 years away. That's coming on us pretty quick. And here we see the flooding region. El Nino events, which are associated with extreme weather events like this flood in Paraguay, are projected to become more frequent by 2040, regardless of emission scenarios. So ENSO is one of the most significant but variable climate patterns in the world. This tropical Pacific Ocean phenomenon affects weather in South America, Australia, Asia, and beyond, and North America too. During an El Nino event, the sea surface temperature of the eastern tropical Pacific Ocean warms, trade winds weaken. El Nino's associated weather extremes often have dramatic implications for public health, global supply chain, setting off natural disasters like flooding in Central South America, droughts in Southeast Asia. Even though right now, currently in La Nina, and La Nina is projected to persist definitely into the fall, maybe even into early next year is what I'm seeing the current projection. So right now it's the La Nina, but we're talking about overall. And overall, there are studies that suggest that could end up in the El Nino aspect of ENSO almost on a permanent basis. And that's kind of what they're getting at here in, in this little report. And so, so influential that climate scientists have dedicated decades to tracking and predicting its irregular cycles. Well, irregular, okay. Um, it, it's, you pretty much go from, say, El Nino to neutral to La Nina, back to neutral, back to El Nino, and so forth. And... Yeah, that can be anywhere from like 18 months, 24 months, 30 months. So it's not like every 12 months we know it's going to do this. Yeah, there's some variability to it, but it does cycle through. Now, if they want to say, you know, it cycles through not on a predictable set pattern, okay. Irregular, maybe inconsistent would, might be a better word. I don't know. I'm not a wordsmith. Researchers are also studying how ENSA will be affected by climate change. Now, new research published in Nature Climate Change you know, used some uh, new models, and they predict by 2040, El Nino events will become more frequent because of changes to the climate. These events are already in motion and will happen regardless of short-term emission mitigation efforts according to the authors, already in motion. Then you toss into the lag effect. Yeah, exponentiation. Yeah, it's not going to be stopped. This finding is another layer on a growing pile of work that is pointing quite conclusively to ongoing changes to ENSO related to greenhouse gases, said Kim Cobb, climate scientist at Georgia Institute of Technology not involved in this particular research. As a combination of atmospheric science studies based on improved sophisticated modeling and geoscience study based on paleoclimate data derived from fossil coral records. We're already looking at isotopic uh, fractionation. But you heard me say many times before, if you want to get an idea what's going to happen, what's happening now is going to happen in the future, look at the past. So looking at these data here and these uh, of, you know, uh, techniques at their disposal, researchers generally agree that human-caused climate change will soon increase El Nino frequency and intensity. Increase El Nino frequency and intensity. Some studies even indicate that climate change could already be having an effect on El Nino. That would not surprise me, to be honest. 
However, because the ENSO pattern is so variable, it has been difficult for scientists to decipher climate change signals from natural variability. Okay, that's a fair point. Because it's an 18, 24, 30 month cycle, whatever, okay, how do you uh, separate out the climate change signals from the natural variability, variability signal? So, so that is a legitimate fair point. So, you know, trying to figure out, you know, that very uh, question there. Matt Collins is the climate change research at University of Exeter in the UK and the co-author of the paper. When you see the weather map on TV, that's the same principle. In other words, you look at what's the current condition and then you try to model based on that, try to project what's going to happen. So they uh, looked at four possible future emissions scenario, how that might affect ENSO uh, related sea surface temperature and rainfall between 2015 and 2099. In the most sustainable future scenario, they model CO2 emissions reach net zero around 2050, and then begin to, to decline by 2099. Good luck with that. In the most fossil fuel intensive scenario, CO2 emissions more than double by 2099. So they're going from basically zero emissions to doubling current levels. So the, you know, so they're trying to, you know, they're basically trying best case scenario, worst case scenario. These are the same shared socioeconomic uh, pathways, uh, sometimes called uh, uh, SSP, used to inform the recent IPCC, Six assessment report. The researchers found that regardless of any emissions mitigation efforts taken in upcoming decades, climate change will lead to an increase in El Nino associated rainfall patterns by 2040. Okay, we need to look at that statement again. The researchers found that regardless of any emissions mitigation efforts taken in upcoming decades, Climate change will lead to an increase in El Nino associated rainfall patterns by 2040, and likely the duration and the intensity. Climate change impact on ENSO related sea surface temperature was predicted to emerge slightly later, becoming clear by 2070. The difference in timing of emergence is likely because there's less background noise in the rainfall data compared to the temperature data. In other words, sea surface temperature in the tropical Pacific isn't necessarily being affected more slowly than rainfall. Rather, the climate change signal must be stronger before it can be differentiated from natural variability in the data. So basically, they gotta, you got to really look to find that signal and you gotta be able to tease it out. We can see the rainfall, we can measure that. We can, we can compare that to past data. That's easy to do. But the variability in the sea surface temperature, especially when you know how, how ENSO changes, it, when you know what does the intertropical tropical convergence zone, where is that located? You know, how that, you know, also what are cloud cover or lack of, how that affects temperature. So that is, that's more of a challenge. But they're still going to see something emerging by 2070. Some consequences already locked in. Not only are these findings consistent with takeaways in the IPCC 6 assessment report, but they're also in line with thousands of years of paleoclimate data from the central tropical Pacific, which indicate that El Nino extremes have been stronger in the past 50 years than they were in the pre-industrial era. El Nino extremes have been stronger in the past 50 years than they were in the pre-industrial era. Oh, and what's been happening in the past 50 years? Right. The oceans have been absorbing 93% of our heat energy. So, uh, Cobb continues to say that we are locked into certain increments of warming no matter what. More frequent El Nino events will likely mean more floods, droughts, wildfires, coral bleaching episodes. 
These effects driven by a more localized climate pattern will be felt on top of the effect of a steady rise in global temperatures. And they showcase how climate change will have compounding impact on global weather patterns. There's this idea that climate change is something that's going to happen in a hundred years time. But really, it's happening now. We're likely to see potentially big changes in the climate system in the next few decades. And when I did the uh, recent two-part video looking at the interactions among the tipping elements, uh, extensive research done by the PIK group out of Potsdam, Germany, one of those interactions they're looking at uh, was ENSO. And they're basically stating that uh, an increase of 1.3 degrees C is enough to cause uh, uh, chaotic uh, weather patterns and chaotic climate. Well, the IPCC says we're at 1.2. We're really well beyond that, you know, because if you look at 1750 as the baseline, we're well beyond 1.2. And guess what? We're well beyond 1.3. And we're seeing crazy weather going on right now, right? F you know, fires, floods, extremes, you know, heat bombs, precipitation bombs, wild swings in temperature and, the, you know, precipitation amounts and so on. We're seeing it now. Climate change is, is, has come home to roost and it's taken effect. And we're going to be living with it from here on out. So, this is the study is one of those uh, research uh, papers that uh, implies uh, or supports uh, better, uh, uh, you know, this supports the idea that uh, El Nino, part of the ENSO cycle, will become the dominating uh, aspect of that cycle, almost leading to a permanent El Nino or a near permanent El Nino situation in the Eastern Pacific Ocean. So, there you have it. We'll talk soon.